Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, on Saturday, uh, we're going to try this puzzle here, which is a thermo Sudoku that has been sent in to us on Twitter um, by Xavier Surratt, who uh, we've done some of Xavier's puzzles on the channel before. I don't know if this is one of his puzzles. It's certainly suggested by him, which, so it probably is. And he has a sort of cryptic message along with uh, the puzzle, which is basically that apparently has quite an easy start and then gets quite difficult. So I don't know what that means, but we're going to see in a minute. Now, if you want to try the puzzle, click on the link under the video. That'll take you to exactly uh, this screen uh, and you can have a go uh, using our software. Now, let's remind ourselves of the rules of Thermo Sudoku. Um, basically, the grid contains these thermometer shapes and we need to make sure that we put the smallest number on the thermometer at the bulb end and then afterwards, uh, the numbers must strictly increase. They don't have to increase in steps of one, but they must increase. So here, for example, this square could be a six, a seven, or an eight. Um, it couldn't be a nine, because that would mean this square would have to be bigger than a nine. And it actually, in this instance, it can't be an eight either, because then this square would have to be a nine, and that's going to clash with that. So, well, let's label that square as a six or a seven. But that's the sort of logic that we need to use to crack the puzzle. Um, normally, the way these work, uh, for those of you who haven't done these puzzles before, is you should work very hard on the ones and the nines because they're the most restricted digits. Um, so let's have a look. Well, we can see that square is going to have to be a one because it's got to be lower than a two, and this square is completely unrestricted. Um, now, ah, now this square I think has to be a one in this top box. And the reason for that is we've got these two ones here ruling out all of those squares. This one rules out that square. Now we can't put the one here because that would mean we'd need to put a number lower than a one in the bulb of the thermometer. So that's a one. So one of those two squares is a one. I don't think we can be sure which yet. Nines must be in one of these two squares. Ah, now this one's interesting because it fixes this thermometer look because we need three numbers lower than a five that don't include a one. So they must be two, three, and four. And because we know they strictly increase from the bulb end, that must be two, three, and four. I'm just going to shut my door one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, right, I've just got this two, three, and four. So we can pencil mark fours into one of those squares. Threes we know next to nothing about. There's a, in fact, this is the only three in the grid, so let's move on. Twos, yeah, okay, we can fix a two. This must be a two. Again, twos are ruled out by these twos. This two rules out that square, so we know the two is in either of these two squares. Well, if I put it here, I need to have two numbers lower than a two to fill the thermometer, so that's not possible. So that's a two, there's a two in one of those three squares which I can't do anything with. Nine, now, where can the nine go in this top box? So it can't go in any of those squares because of the nine here. It can't go any of these two squares because there would have to be a number bigger than a nine along the thermometer. So it must go in the top corner there. And now, ah, oh, no. Okay, so nine can be in either of these two squares. I was about to get excited then, but that's not terribly useful. Um, Now, what next? Fives. We've got these two fives and this five mean simple Sudoku, no thermometers. We just write a five in here, gives us a five here, gives us a five here, and. Ah, no, okay, so there's a five in one of those two positions, and down here there's a five. Ah, now that's interesting. So there's a five at one end of a thermometer. Is this one? Ah, no, that can still be a one. I was about to get excited because of the two here, restricting, so this can't be a two. So if I put the five here, this has to be a one, but that can, these two can still be two, three, and four in that case. Ah, but we've got twos, there's a two in one of those squares, so there's two in one of these squares, so there's no two. 
So if this is a 5, this has to be 3, 4, this has to be 1. Is there anything stopping that from being true? Well, there might be, but I'm not seeing what it is. Uh, bother. Okay, right. So, but that, hang on. If this can only be 6 or 7, I oh, know this could still be 8. Okay, let's have a look over here. So these three squares are 6, 7, and 8, which means, well, hang on a minute, that can't be, if this is an 8, that would force a 9 here, which clashes with that. So that's not 8. This can't be 8, because that would make these have to be 9 and then a number bigger than 9. So that's not an 8. So this is the 8, and these two, increase along the thermometer. So this is a 6 and this is a 7, which means one of these two squares is a 7. Eight. Bother. Um, well, this is an 8 because it can't be a 9. It's got to be bigger than a 7. That means Ah, and that means this is an 8, because this can't be an 8. So we've got these two 8s here, sorry, that's what I'm looking at. We can't put an 8 into this square, because that's going to mean we need three numbers bigger than an 8. That's not possible. So this is an 8. So now, what can this square be? This can't. This is a number bigger than a 5, and it can't be an 8 or a 9. So this is a 6 or a 7, and this is a 6 or a 7. So that means that this is a 7 and this is a 6. Now, hang on. Where can an eight go in this block? Let's have a think about this. So there can't be an eight in any of those squares. Now, if we have an eight in either of these squares, this this square would be a 9, and that breaks with that, so that neither of these squares is an 8. This can't be an 8, obviously. And so can this be an 8, this square here? If it was an 8, this would be a 9. Is there any reason? Ah, oh, no, hang on, there's a nines here and here. So there are nines in those two squares. So this doesn't contain a nine. So the nine is along these three squares in this block. So where can an eight go? An eight can't go there, it can't go here, it can't go here, it can't go here, and it can't go here. So there is an eight in one of those two positions. There's a five eight pair now in this block. Oh, wait a second. Right, okay, there's a clever, well, clever, is that the right word? There is certainly some logic we can do here. Now, let's imagine, the logic we need to do is on these three columns. Let's have a think about this. This square, if this, we know the 8 is either here or here, so let's imagine for a minute it's here. If it's here, this will be a 5. But we know that we have to put a 7 into this 3x3 three three block somewhere. Well, if this is a 5, the 7 has to be in one of these two squares. So let me show you. that This will be an 8, and there will be a 7 in one of these two positions. Let's just say it's there. And look what happens. We have a 7-8 here and a 7-8 here. 
So looking at this top block, there must be a 7 and an 8 into these two positions. But look, whoops, this square can be neither a 7 nor an 8. So that just simply is impossible. Um, this square cannot be an 8. And that is really, really lovely. So if that's the case, let's uh, undo that. This must be a 5. This is, this is an 8. Therefore, this is a 1. Because it must be... It can't be a 2. And we know that there's a 2 in one of these two squares. So these two digits are 3 and 4. They must increase along the thermometer. So that we can place them. This is a 3 now, because of the 3 here and the 3 here. This is a 3. This is a 4. And this 4 here forces a 4 into this square, because of the earlier pencil marking we did. And look, we've got a 1 in those two positions. So there's a 1 in one of these three positions. Ah. And it's not here. So in fact, this is the only, this must be a 9. Because, and we know that because the 1 and the 2 are forced into these two squares. And it, let's pencil mark that like that. This is 6 and 7. We know it must increase along the thermometer. So it's got to be like that. Now these two squares must include a 6. So these two squares, that's lovely isn't it? These two squares must be 7 and 8. And the interesting thing about that is it resolves this square. Because we know if this is a 7 or an 8, this can't possibly be a 6. So that's 9, that's 6, and we don't know yet whether this is 7 or 8 now. Uh, but the 9 still a surprise isn't it? That's so there's a 9 in one of these two positions. And these three squares must be, we need a 3 and a 7 to complete this row. So this, this is 3, 4 and 7. That's not a 7. That's not a 4. We don't know anything about that one. Right, let's see what we can do now. Because this 7, it points at that square. So that resolves a 7 and a 2. There must now be a 2 in one of those two positions. This is not a 7. This is a 5. So we need 3, 4, and 6. So well, that's a 6 then. So this is 3 and 4, which is resolvable by this 4. So that's 4, that's 3. Fours now. Uh, yeah, this must be the 4. 4 in one of these two squares, oops, not 3. In this block we need 1, 6 and 7. So this 6 fixes that. I was expecting that to be resolved. That's the only, well it is I suppose, the 1 and the 7 point of that would give me an 8 here and 7 there. Still don't actually know whether that's a 1 or a oh, yes we do. What am I doing? My scanning's going to pop. Um, so, 7's into these two positions. Oops. 7 and 9. We must need a 6 into one of those two squares. So this is a 4-6 pair. Which means this is 1, 2 and 3 along the top here. So, two, 3. And I think... If we've done all the thermometer work, we have done all the thermometer work, so everything else ought to be resolvable simply from normal Sudoku. You can see these two squares have got to be 3 and 9, so that's resolved like that. This now should be an 8, therefore this is an 8 and this is a 2. Let's get rid of the 2 there. 8, 8, this is an 8 by normal Sudoku. This square here we can write in, that's a 9. That resolves the 9 and the 7. That resolves this to be a 3. And I think probably we're on the right track now for finishing it. So there was just that 
really, really cunning uh, trick that we had to do down here to resolve which way round the 5 and the 8 went. That was, I'm pretty sure, the, uh, the difficult step. Um, now, these two squares are 3 and 6, I think, so we can resolve those. Therefore, 2, 1, 3 along those squares. Must be 1 into one of those two positions. This square is now resolvable. 9, 1, 1, 2. This is a 2. This should be a 6. Check. It's all good. And that's how to do Thermo Sudoku. So I hope you guys got on well with it. Be interested to know how you found the puzzle. Did you, um, have I, you know, was this the difficult step? And how easy was that to find? Uh, do let us know in the comments. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.